Uh, good evening. Uh, welcome to uh, the, uh, <laughs> the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, meeting for Tuesday, April 29th, 2013. Um, I will call the meeting to order. Um, for a change, we don't have a terribly uh, uh, lengthy uh, agenda, but um, the first order of business is to welcome our uh, new, co new uh, town code enforcement officer, uh, Benjamin McDougall. Uh, ben comes to us from, most recently, from uh, York, Maine, where he was the code enforcement officer there. Good, I remembered that. Um, and I think we all on the board and uh, want to extend Ben a welcome to the town of Cape Elizabeth. Thank and you. we uh, wish you a lot of success and uh, good luck. And uh, we know you're going to be a great resource for the, uh, for the town and certainly for the board. So welcome aboard. Thank you. Yeah. Happy to be here. Okay, um, the first order of business is the, uh, or next order rather, is to approve the minutes of uh, our January 2nd, 2013 meeting. Everyone had a chance to look at those, I assume. Um, anyone want to make a motion to uh, approve the minutes or have any questions on the minutes, I guess, first? I move to approve them. Okay. We have, okay. So we got a first and a second. All in favor? Any opposed? Okay, that's 5-0. Okay. All right. Um, we have no old business, I think for once after four months. Uh, our new business item is, um, our new old business, I guess, is um, the uh, request for a variance um, of map uh, U03 lot 114 at 825 Shore Road for Maria S. Chambers to construct a garage with a rear setback of, of six feet, a side setback of four feet, and a setback of 16 feet from Stony Brook Road. Um, this was tabled at our January 2nd uh, meeting, and uh, we, uh, we welcome uh, Ms. Chambers back to the ZBA, and uh, why don't you go ahead and, and you. present your application. Great. Hear me okay? Yes. All right. Well, thank you very much for having me back this month and for the opportunity to resubmit the application. So I would have the opportunity to meet with Benjamin and understand better what I needed to bring back to the board. So I was able to meet with Benjamin last week on his second or third day. He was kind enough to give me his time, and he helped walk me through the application and understand much better what I needed to bring to you all. So here we are. So what I'll go through, I'll go through it quickly, but if you have any questions or I want to stop. I got a quick question. Yes. This that we got handed before we started, did you yes. prepare this or was this? I did. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. I did. I prepared, I so I submitted, resubmitted the application. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, I had actually made one change on the resubmit, but I'll cover that later. And then I met with Ben the last week and finished putting together this documentation for you all. Okay. okay? And, I, and I think uh, we all have a, a copy of, of the most recent submission, which is, I guess, a further request for variance, kind of an addendum, I guess. It right. has nice colors and photos in it and very easy to follow. It's been an iterative process, but hopefully we have what we need here tonight. So what I want to review is I want to talk about the current situation and why I'm asking for the variance. I want to talk about the proposed location of the new garage and how the variances would, would fall out. I want to specifically respond to the four conditions that must be met in order to grant the variance, as you asked me last month. I want to review the other properties, garages in the immediate neighborhood, again, which I was requested to do. And then, just quickly, I have letters of support from the abutting neighbors. So again, happy to entertain any questions throughout the conversation. So if you'll turn in your packet to page three. So current situation, uh, the lot is 825 Shore Road. It is a non-conforming lot. It's a long, skinny lot in a very eclectic neighborhood of older homes. 
It's one of three uh, very similar lots, 821, 823, and 825 Shore Road. Point of history, uh, evidently they were actually built for the officers of Fort Williams as officers' homes back in 1907 and 1908, long before ordinances existed. So without <coughs> ordinances in mind. So I'm proposing to build a garage positioned similarly to these other two properties, and I have photos of those as well. They are long skinny lots as well, and they have their garages tucked into the back corner. So that's what I'm proposing to do. I wanted to talk just quickly since uh, why I'm here asking for the variance, since there was a, a concern that was expressed last month about was I coming to you for this variance, and it would be a financial windfall for me if I were granted the ability to build a garage. So I wanted to just go into the situation. I don't normally talk about my personal situation in public, but uh, since it seems to warrant what I'm uh, talking about, what I'm doing, I'm going to talk about that a little bit. So I purchased this home in 2008 for $467,000. I, it was in significant disrepair, and I did significant renovations on the home, invested over $150,000 in this home. Um, with the hope that I would be in this home with my two young daughters for the next 20 years or when they're in college. We love this home. We love the neighborhood. Unfortunately, I have an, I, well, not unfortunately, I have an 82-year-old mother whose health is failing and she's no longer able to live alone and we would like her to live with us and it is a small house. So I am under contract on a two-unit where we plan to move so that my mother could live with us rather than going into an assisted living facility. So I am unfortunately in the position of having to sell the house uh, four and a half years later. And uh, I am already, with the list price, taking a significant financial hit. Um, I will take between $100,000 and $150,000 loss on the home. It has turned out, the home has been on the market for three months. It has turned out to be a showstopper, that it does not have a garage. We live in Maine. People want a garage. And so I'm not able to even talk about whether I'm able to build a garage. And in delving into it, I realized I would need a variance to do that. So I'm here applying for that variance so I can tell potential buyers that, yes, you, in fact, could build a garage on this lot in the back of the home. If I still don't sell the home with that information, I will probably stay long enough to build a garage, and hopefully that will be enough to uh, make the house sellable. That will be more investment on my part, and that's investment that I do not anticipate recovering. So for better or for worse, it is, it is not a financial windfall. It's actually a significant financial hardship. But I'm putting my family in front of my finances and sucking it up and moving on. So that's the situation of why I'm here and why I'm asking to be able to build a garage on the property. So if you want to go to the next page, just a plot map. Um, I had put on here the proposed location of the garage. So my home is set very back, far back on this long skinny lot again. On the northern side there is an existing three foot setback between my home and the property line. Um, so what I am proposing, a couple of things, it is a non-conforming again corner lot. And what that means, as I delved into it with Benjamin, is that both Shore and Stony Brook, I have to comply with the setbacks of frontage. So um, it needs to be set back um, at least 20 feet from both those property lines, Stony Brook and Shore. So that's one thing that is informing the difficulty of putting this on the lot. Um, I, uh, we also. Uh, deciphered that on the side there must be at least a 10-foot setback. So I did amend the application. So on what is the west side, I am proposing a 10-foot setback. So I'm actually only asking for one variance from the ordinance, which would be on that north side, and proposing to have a 4-foot setback. So that would put it as far back in the corner as, it, as is reasonable and practical and not have it up too close to the street and not have it right in the middle of the yard. 
Are your adjacent neighbors, I know last time when we looked at this, your adjacent neighbors were concerned about it coming forward into the lot. Are they okay with that? Yes. Great. Yes. Thank you. Is, uh, just one follow up on that, just looking at your proposed site of the new garage, the, the lot that's behind, well, it's behind you, uh, lot 141, do they have a garage? On, behind me on Stony Brook? On, on Stony Brook. On, on, on Stony Brook? Yes. If that, if you go to page 15, there, that's the, my buddy neighbor on Stony Brook, and there was an addition put on at some point with a one-car garage underneath it. Okay, so that's lot 141 is, is 15 Stony Brook? 11. 11, sorry. Giving you the right information. Yes. Okay, so that garage is, is literally attached to the house, it looks it's like. It's underneath an, underneath, a, yeah. an addition. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. There's a, you'll see as I go through the garage solutions, there's lots of creative ways people have fit sure. garages on these lots. Right. <clears throat> so, page five, conditions requiring a variance. I'll just go through these. Um, the need for a variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general conditions of the neighborhood. So again, the main driving force here is that's that long, skinny lot, and the home is set so far back on the lot, back from shore. So in order to have a garage behind the home, I don't have a lot of area to work with. So long, skinny lot with an interesting configuration. Um, page six. B, the granting of variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not unreasonably detrimentally affect the use or market value of abutting properties. So this is the primary reason why I'm requesting an ordinance, is so that I can as closely as possible mirror how the other properties have positioned their garages and, and, and fit in as much as possible with how the neighborhood is laid out. So I think it will actually enhance the appearance of the property. I didn't bring my pictures of all my junk in the yard this time, but um, I think it will align nicely with the other properties and enhance the, the appearance of the property to others. Um, the pra practical difficulty is not the result of action taken by applicant or a prior owner, and it was developed in 1907. There were no ordinances at the time, so there were no ordinances to consider or zonings to consider. No other feasible alternative to a variance is available to the petitioner. So it's not feasible, feasible, feasible with what I have to work with back there to comply with all the setback restrictions. And again, the abutting and neighboring property owners, as I've gone around and talked about this, have expressly said, please don't put it right on the street or right in the middle of the yard where it's, it's, it's sticking out like some of the other garages are. Um, please put it back in that corner as far as you can. But if it were, would you still need a variance if you were to situate it such that? I wouldn't be able to build a garage and meet all the variances right. because of that front, front setback. Stony Brook is front and Shore is front. So okay. math doesn't work. <laughs> <clears throat> So, next question, please provide documentation that shows your proposed structure to be of comparable size, location, and number with existing structures on at least 10 of the properties in the immediate neighborhood. So, I went around and did an informal survey and took pictures. I didn't actually measure all my neighbor's garages. I didn't want to get arrested, uh, but I did try to capture the essence. <laughs> before a different board for a different reason. Um, but I tried to capture the essence of what we have in the neighborhood as far as other garages. And I, so I looked at the homes on Lower Stony Brook and then those two other lots next to me on shore, a total of 12 homes. And of those 12 homes, 100% have garages or detached storage buildings. 11 had garages and there was one detached large storage building. 
Um, Ten of the twelve garages, from what I could decipher, appeared to be non-conforming. And uh, seven of the twelve were two-car garages, four were one-car garages, and one was, again, a large storage building. So a plethora of different garage options in the neighborhood. And I'll just I'll go through just quickly and, and point them out. So my buddy neighbor, 823 Shore, page 8, has a two-car garage that, again, is right back in that corner you see in my second picture down there. That's the corner of my lot, and you can see where the garage is right up on my corner. Um, page 9, 821 Shore, Rich Ward's home. Again, uh, a garage tucked back into the corner, another long, skinny lot. Um, page 10, across the street to Stony Brook, has a two-car detached garage plus office and space up above. It is actually sitting, it appears to be sitting right on the property line, so non-conforming. Um, directly across from my driveway, 6 Stony Brook, they added, someone added a, a garage at some point, almost right on the street. It looks like it has a two or three foot setback from the street and um, four or five foot setback from the side, so non-conforming. We keep moving up Stony Brook, 10 Stony Brook, a conforming <laughs> two-car detached garage. That's a very large lot, and so that's um, detached and uh, with plenty of room on that lot. Uh, the next home up at Stony Brook Road, this is the one out of the 12 that does not have a garage. It has, as you can see, a large storage shed that is sitting just a couple of feet from the line. Keep going. Um, 16 Stony Brook, 20 Stony Brook, two car, one car. <clears throat> Again, all in various configurations of being back on one or the other lines. Uh, 30 Stony Brook, another one in the back corner of a, actually a very large lot. Um, 36, a two car that was added. Again, sort of right up on the street. We cross the street and start working our way back down. 21 Stony Brook, a two car tucked way back in the corner. 17 Stony Brook, a one car that was added, I think, at one point with a porch, so it's stuck underneath the home. <laughs> 15 Stony Brook, a two car, an attached garage, a little more space, doesn't have the setback in the rear. And then 11 Stony Brook, which we talked about, has that one car garage underneath an addition that was added at some point. So lots of ways that people have positioned their garages. And then, uh, Ms. Chambers, you have, um, I guess, note from your, uh, I guess, an earlier package from last month. Um, there were a couple letters of support. Yes. Um, could you show on your map, it was 825 Shore Road and yep. So I have. Seventy-four. If you go back to page 7. Yeah. I have the first letter is from Peter and Ann Curry, and they are in lot 118. Mm -hmm. So they would most look out directly. They do most look out directly at my yard. Mm -hmm. And so they would be um, full frontal to my garage. Um, the second is Chris and Ellen Scontris, and they are 823 shore, so 113. So the garage would be directly over the fence from their property. Mm -hmm. And then directly across the street on shore, I apologize, I'm unable to see the lot number on here. Um, but but the, the Shermans. The lot beside 116 and 114. Right. The Shermans. The Shermans, exactly. So the Shermans are looking full frontal at the front of my house. It's actually across shore. Yeah, it's this corner one, isn't it? Uh, oh, isn't it? It's a cross shore? A cross shore. Yeah, so. Oh, it's over there. Gotcha. Sorry. That, they're the ones who would, you know, see it directly from the front. Uh, Maria, or Ms. Chambers, apparently you went around to at least 10, uh, 10 of butters. Did any of them object to what you were doing? No. Of course, there's no one here to object, but then again, we don't know, we don't, we don't know if they, they got notice uh, of the hearing. Sure they did. Notices were sent. I'm sorry? Um, yes. How? That in the mail. In the package. That, that was sent to the neighbors? Yeah. Yes. And uh, it was a pretty... I know that. So all the neighbors did get a, a package? Yeah. Yeah. No, all the neighbors got a, a package 
indicating what you were trying to do? Mm -hmm. Well, they got notice of the hearing. Okay, and that was then in a letter or a leaflet? Yes, a letter. Do you have a copy of the letter? Um, it's not a requirement, but you did it on your own. I don't have a copy of what was sent to them. It's, I only have what was sent in the, to it's me. It's in the package of January uh, 2nd. I have all the papers here. Do you have it? An additional feature is that this application was, was submitted and then withdrawn. So there was notice, constructional notice the first time we met a month ago. This is now the second application. And notice was sent again. The copy of the notice is in my packet that we got at the second to the, the third to the last page. It's the notice of the public hearing. Well, I have there will be a public idea. hearing on Tuesday, January 29 at impressive. 7. And then it describes the request from Maria S. Chambers to construct a garage with a rear setback of six feet, a side setback of four feet, and a setback of 16 feet in Stony Brook Road. Yep. Well, I'm very impressed with this. Joanna, we've been talking about this in the past, about, uh, about it not getting notices. Right. And you did this on your own? No, you did it. <laughs> Town did it. Town does this. Right. I didn't know that we had a whole discussion right. on this on a and previous I, hearing. I was we do of notices of, hearing, of public hearings. What we had talked about historically was that there's not notice given when building permits are issued. OK, yeah. thank you. Well, this is perfect. I mean, and it, and no one's objected. Uh, I, I was surprised I at you. how many neighbors got notice. Which is great. People who, who were quite a ways away said, oh, so, building a garage. Okay, thank you. I want to thank you for taking the time. And I know it must be an inconvenience to have waited as long as you did to come back to us. But the thoroughness with which you addressed the criteria was really impressive. And thank you for taking the time and care to do that. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you for that. Any, any, any further part Party of the presentation? Or? I, I think I'm done. Okay. But happy uh, to answer more questions. Yeah, I, I, I agree with Joanne. I, I, your, your, uh, your package and your presentation are very good, and, and um, I appreciate you taking the time to, to come before us. Um, does anyone on the board have any questions for this chambers before we uh, close the, the open portion of the, the meeting? Uh, I just have one perhaps a couple of questions. Yes, um, uh, at the last hearing that we talked about before you withdrew the application, we were talking about there was a, um, a uh, the garage used to be there and then was removed prior to your purchase of the property. I had heard that at some point there was a garage there, but I have not been able to find any documentation on that. So I, I honestly don't know if there ever was one there. Thank you. I, there's no evidence other than hearsay. <laughs> and, and still your intent that the garage would be approximately 26 by 26? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any, any other questions of the applicant? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. So I um, guess I'm curious to hear what people have to have Ben, to you, you, you went out. Did you go out to the site as well? No, I didn't. Okay. It seems to me that the new information that we have establishes compliance with each of the criteria that were circulated in the last two pages of the packet that we got. And I, I, I'm not really sure what the next step is in terms of moving forward on this. Well, I, I, the, uh, um, there's, a, there's a couple things. We, we do have to um, agree that, that all the elements have been met for essentially uh, so we pr that the, the compliance with the practical difficulty standard has been met, and, and we can go through that. Um, uh, you know, I happen to believe, I think that the um, you know, a, cu a couple of considerations from my perspective <coughs> is that it's a non-conforming lot. Um, the the vast majority of the of the residences um, in that area are non-conforming lots with garages, <laughs> um, and I think that um, you know, finally, from from my perspective, the fact that regardless of where you situate the garage, you're <laughs> you're going to be here looking for a variance. So. Um, 
I think that um, the applicant has um, done what, um, you know, it sounds like she's listened to her neighbors and, and is trying to position it in such a way that it's as, is consistent with at least the abutters as it can be. And, um, you know, that's, I, I think that's, um, she should be applauded for that. Um, so I, I, I'm, uh, you know, um, in favor of, of, of granting the variance, you know, on that basis. Um, so, um, I mean, I guess the, um, I mean, we'd need a, a motion to, um, That's fine, thank you. to approve it in a second, and then we, thank you. you know, um, go, go through these elements of, of, of practical difficulty. I guess, you know, probably, probably go through that first. Where I wish, wish the town council was here. <laughs> um, I think we'd go, we'd go through the elements first, and assuming we met, then I, you know, I guess I'd propose that we have a, you know, a motion to um, on the, the application itself, and then and then go through the finding of facts. So, um, so um, the elements required for uh, approval of the variance under practical difficulty standard uh, are as we. Uh, follows. Um, there's uh, no substantial departure from the intent um, of the of the of the ordinance would be the first the first st uh, standard. So I guess um, all in favor of that. I think we've established that the majority of the lots in the area are non-conforming and they have non-conforming garages and this is consistent and I think it speaks volumes frankly that you that the applicant spoke with nearly all of her all of her abutting neighbors and m the majority of her adjoining neighbors all of whom also received notice and no one is here to say this isn't in a location where it makes sense to have it even though there's non-conformity with regard to the lot. Mm -hmm. So I think that criteria is met. Okay. I agree. So we need uh, to, to, uh, to, to approve the variance under the practical difficulty standard. At least four of the four of, uh, the members must vote, you know, in, in favor of each of the of the standards. So I guess with that, I, I would um, say that you know, I'll put out there that there's been no substantial departure from the intent of the, of the ordinance. All in favor? Any opposed? Okay, so that's we got six, six zero now. I guess we have six here. Okay. Second, a literal enforcement of the ordinance would cause a practical difficulty, as defined by 30-A MRSA Section 4353-4C. Uh, all in favor? Opposed? Six zero. Uh, the need for a, the need for a variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not the general circumstances of the neighborhood. All in favor? Opposed? Okay, six zero. The granting of a variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not unreasonably detrimentally affect the use or market value of the abutting properties. In determining whether a variance would have an unreasonable detrimental effect on the use or market value of abutting properties, the zoning board shall consider if the variance would have, an, have the effect of blocking an established view, posing a fire safety hazard, casting a, sh a shadow on an adjoining lot, reducing the appraised value of an adjoining property by 10% or more, uh, or eliminating the privacy of an adjoining property without an effort to mitigate the loss, the loss privacy. Okay, uh, all in favor? Opposed? Six zero. Okay. Uh, practical difficulty is not the result of action taken by the applicant or a prior owner. All in favor? Opposed? Six zero. No other feasible alternative to a variance is available to the petitioner. All in favor? Opposed? Okay. Six zero. The granting of a variance will not unreasonably adversely affect the natural environment. All in favor? Opposed? Six zero. 
And lastly, the property is not located in a whole or in part within a shoreland area, areas as described in Title 38, Section 435. All in favor? Opposed? Okay. So the practical difficulty standard has been met. With that, I guess I would entertain a motion um, uh, on the application. Move to approve the application for variance. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Okay. And all in favor? Opposed? Okay. The variance passes 6 0. Um, we do have um, to do the finding of facts as well as part of this, so I will go through that now. Um, the finding of facts are as follows. The variance request of map U03 lot 114, 825 Shore Road, um, the applicant is Maria S. Chambers. Maria S. Chambers is the owner of record of map U03 lot 114 at 825 Shore Road. 825 Shore Road has frontage on both Shore Road and Stony Brook Road, and the definition of setback front in the capable zoning ordinance provides that a lot having frontage on more than one street shall be required to meet the minimum front setback of each street. The subject lot is in the, uh, is in the Resident C Zoning District, and Shore Road is classified in the capable zoning ordinance as a collector street and Stony Brook Road is classified as a local street. The required front setback is 40 feet from the shore road and 20 feet from Stony Brook Road. The applicant is proposing to build a new two-car garage facing Stony Brook Road, which is 16 feet from Stony Brook Road and over 100 feet from shore road. Thus, the applicant requesting a four-foot front setback variance from Stony Brook Road. Um, that was. You, was that modified to three or was that modified to four? It was modified to four. The, the, okay. The front setback can remain. Yeah. The side setback can remain. The, the rear setback needs to go from 15 feet to four feet. Okay. And I think that's, I think that's what this is. Four, four foot setback. Yeah. Variant from Stony Brook Road. Right? Uh, no. The, the, the rear setback is, well, it's the, if you're face standing in on Stony Brook facing the lot, the, the line to the rear, yeah, I'll show you here. The one between 114 and 141 is where we're doing the variance, right? Right. No. No? It, oh, it's between 114 and 113. Correct. By the fence. So that's the variance. So it's the, the, this is the rear line. Yeah. This is this is the side. And so it's she's requesting a three foot front setback variance from Stony Brook. No, she's she's not. She she changed her application. Okay. She's not requesting a variance from the front setback. She's able. She can meet the twenty foot setback on the front. Okay. She's going to meet the 10 foot setback on the side, which is required. So, yeah. neither of those require a variance. The rear setback, 15 feet is required, and she's requesting four. So, there's only Okay, so four. really, this finding of fact is not even relevant anymore. Correct. Okay. And it's wrong, right? Because she is 20 feet from Stony Brook. Right. Uh. Right? Yes. So I don't think the fourth finding of fact yeah, is relevant we'll cross anymore. That cross that out. Yeah. Okay. Glad well, I actually read what I what I'm what I'm reading. <laughs> uh, okay. And lastly, the required rear and side setback is 20 feet from each property boundary. At the rear of the garage, the northerly side, the proposed setback. I think is we four need to delete that sentence. Feet. Okay. Right. Why? It's because the only variance she's getting is at the, the west side of the garage, right? You moved it forward to comply with the rear setback, right? Well, isn't the, it says the required rear and side setback is 20 feet. Yeah, it's just, just stating what Right, what but the then the next sentence is wrong, right? At the rear of the garage? That sentence? Yeah. 
at the rear of the garage, the proposed setback is four feet. Right. Is that correct? Yes, the, yes. Yeah. the rear setback is proposed to be four feet. Oh, okay, right, because yeah. the boundary between 114 right. and 113 is the rear of the lot, not, but, well, the okay. The rear of the lot with respect to Stony Brook. Right. Okay. But the only one of these, of the second and third sentences is accurate. One of them is wrong, right? Yeah. Okay, so it's the third sentence that's wrong? Be, because it's a non-conforming lot, the side setback is 10 feet and the rear setback is 15 feet. Oh, so the required rear and sides, so that first sentence is inaccurate. Right. Okay. So we should change that. Okay, so the required rear and side setback is, just give me the feet. 10 and 20 feet. Thank you. Respectively. Okay. So the required rear and side setback is 10 and 20 feet respectively. At the rear of the garage, the northerly side, the proposed setback is four feet. At the side of the garage, the westerly, the proposed setback is six feet. That's what's incorrect. That's 10 feet. That's 10 feet. So that doesn't even need to be in there. Right, because it's compliant. So we can just strike that sentence. Okay, struck. Thus, the applicant is requesting a rear variance of 16 feet and a side variance of 14 feet. So delete everything after the first feet, right? Or do I have that backwards again? I have that backwards again, don't I? You change, change the 16 to an 11. Yep. And strike the rest. Okay. Thus, the applicant is requesting a rear variance of 11 feet, period. Right? Yes. And there is no side variance being requested. But wait, I thought it was the side. Sorry. Corner lots. <laughs> Very confusing. I mean, I think that's what's confusing is that okay. it's, there's two rears. In the right. and, and the application changed since the last time we saw it. Well, it's changed even since this was, this was. And, and this and is the, really referring to the rear of the garage. In the first sentence, can we just delete whichever one we're not varying? So we're only talking about whatever one we're varying, please? The first sentence of the... Of five. The, the, okay. So we don't talk about what the setback is that we're not varying? It's the rear setback is what we're not varying. So it, the first sentence should say the required the, side setback the, is... 10 feet. 20 feet. 20 feet from the property bank. Okay, the required side setback is 20 feet. Is that the? No, the required side setback becomes 10 feet because it's a non conforming okay. lot. That's a. Uh, right, okay, the required. Okay, the required side setback is. How many feet? That you're, the, the ten. It's 10, but we don't necessarily have to talk about that because it's not being varied. If you want to, for number five, we could simply talk about the rear setback because that's the only thing that's being varied. Okay, which is I think where we started. So at, at the rear of the garage, the northerly side, the proposed setback is four feet. Yes. And that is the only variance as it relates to the garage. Okay, so really everything after that should be struck. Yes. Agreed? Um, well, I, I am not saying that I disagree. I just want for clarification. The purposes of the variance, the orientation of the property is from the road. So the rear of the property, or the variance that we're talking about, is looking from the road, a uh, uh, shore road. So um, the issue for me is not the rear of the garage or the side of the garage, right? That's a question. So we're talking about the variance from looking on the property from Shore Road, and there and the issue is on the side variance. It's the right side if you're looking at it from Shore Road, but because the property is a corner lot, yes, you have to look at it in the most restrictive manner possible. So you have to also look at it as Stony Brook Road being a front 
Yes. And look at the the more restrictive 20 foot setback. Yes. For what would be a side setback from Shore Road, but is a rear setback of 20 feet if you're looking at the property from Stony Brook Road. Perfect clarity now. Sorry. <laughs> it took me a long time. Fine. Okay. To, um, so uh, on the, I'm going to go back over the, the finding of facts again, just quick, quick. I'm not going to reread them, but I'm just going to, um, one through three are as, are as proposed, as written. Four has been stricken. Five now reads, at the rear of the garage, northerly side, the proposed setback is four feet. And the rest of that sentence is deleted. I think we should say that we're varying the rear setback of 20 feet from the property boundary by 16 feet. Why don't we put that as an additional conclusion? That's fine. Okay. Except it's 15 down to four feet, so it's 11 feet. <laughs> because oh, no. <laughs> because it's a non-conforming lot, the rear setback is 15 feet. Sorry, more clarity. The rear setback, when you speak about that, you're looking from Stony Brook North. Yes. I'm with you, all right? So every time that we're talking about a setback, it has to be oriented so what the variance is, because we're crisscrossing the, the point of view upon which the variance will exist. So um, the back side of the property from Shore Road, there is no variance. And that the only variance that we're talking about is from when we look from Stony Brook Road north uh, in from there. Uh, sorry, pushing the variance out so it's four feet uh, from the 15 feet. Correct. Right. At least the transcript will be clear as to that. Go. Mm. Just, all right. Just, uh, I mean, I think we should just put that in as, a, as an additional conclusion. So give me the language. <laughs> I'm not saying anything else. <laughs> um, hmm. Doesn't that last sentence work the way you crossed it out before? We're going to change the 16 to 11? Uh, I think that's right. I, I think uh, use so the same the words. The is requesting a rear variance of 11 feet, period. Uh, but the phrase should be from the point of view or from the viewpoint of Stony Brook Road. Then that would make. Okay. Claire. So let's just, let's just add that to, to what, okay. so, so can you read that back to me again? The applicant is? It's the last sentence on paragraph five. Right, okay. so the Thus the applicant is requesting a rear variance of 11 feet from Stony Brook Road. Um, from the viewpoint of Stony Brook Road. From the viewpoint. Is it totally belt and suspenders to add on the northern, northerly side of the property? That's fine too. Give me that last part again, Josh. On the north, on the northerly side of the property. Okay, so I'm going to read the finding of fact for number five again. Okay, at, at the rear of the garage, northerly side, the proposed setback is four feet. Thus, the applicant is requesting a rear variance of 11 feet from the viewpoint of Stony Brook Road on the northerly side of the property. Okay. March 20. All right. So with that additional finding of facts, I will um, say all in favor, opposed, okay, so that passes 6-0. Supposed to have a, uh, an annual board orientation with Attorney Wall this evening, but that um, 
has been rescheduled. I guess you got called out of town, so we'll probably do that next month. Um, uh, there's an FYI, I guess, um, I guess that was going to happen after the, I don't know how that was going to happen, but it was whether it was going to be after the meeting or during the meeting, we get trained. <laughs> so in any event, that's been postponed until next month. Um, I don't have any communications here. Uh, anybody have anything else? Okay. Congratulations, Ms. Chambers. Thank you. I know this is a very complicated case. <laughs> oh, no. This, this is actually, I look forward to this one, actually. <laughs> um, with that, I, I'll call the, We're not uh, even an hour in. <laughs> call the meeting to adjournment at uh, 7.45 p.m. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.